Cedar plank salmon was a staple in my house growing up. I recently learned this meal came from the Native American tradition of fire roasting or smoking salmon on cedar steaks. But how do salmon get from the river or the ocean to our tables? The answer to this question is actually more complicated than it seems and has greatly changed over time here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm sure you will all have your own questions as we watch this presentation, but I have five I'd like you to pay close attention to. Where do salmon live? What do salmon eat? How many ways are there to catch salmon? How far does the salmon that we get at the grocery store travel to get there? And finally, how many steps are involved in the salmon's journey? The salmon's journey all depends on who's catching it, but no matter who's catching it, it all starts the same. The salmon's journey begins with its food source. Tiny plants and animals called plankton are born and grow in the oceans near Alaska. Shrimp-like organisms called krill eat the plankton, and then small fish eat the krill. These small fish become food for salmon. This is where the steps start to change depending on who and where the fish is going. To give you all a small bit of background, Celilo Falls used to be the location of a lot of native fishing. However, today, due to a dam that was built eight miles upriver from the falls, they no longer exist. Native tribes still fish along the Columbia River, but the dam has changed the way that they fish. They now use gill nets and various other methods. Their traditional way of platform fishing is what we will compare today with the commercial fishermen. This will help showcase how different the salmon's journey has been over the years and across cultures. As shown in this picture, a common way for commercial boats to catch fish is with large nets. They sit out on their boats, throw out their nets, and bring them in when it is time. Before the dams on the Columbia River were built, much of the Native American fishing for the Pacific Northwest happened at the beautiful Celilo Falls. For these native fishermen, there is an important and dangerous step to be done before salmon can be caught. They must build the scaffolds they will perch upon to catch the fish. For today's modern fishermen, after the salmon is caught, they bring the fish back to shore on a boat about 10 miles. Now that their scaffolds have been built, Native American fishermen catch the fish and bring them up onto their scaffolding with large necks to be stored in boxes. Oftentimes, this takes two to three men depending on the size of the fish. When the commercial fisherman's fish reaches the shores, it is then cleaned in preparation for its next step. Natives would take the fish back home to their families. Before dams were built into the Columbia River, Native American fishermen would bring so much salmon back to their villages they would need to share. The families who didn't have men eligible for fishing would be given whatever they needed, and guests would take as much as they could carry back home. Once the commercial fish is washed, it is frozen to be preserved for its next location. When the salmon was brought home, the women smoked it on cedar skewers to cook and preserve it. This is where the tradition I talked about in the beginning of the presentation comes from. Once frozen, the fish is ready to be packaged and sent to its next location. Once the native salmon is cured, it is stored and ready to eat for future meals. This is where the journey ends for the native salmon, but the commercial salmon has a few more steps. Let's find out what they are. In the final three steps, let's find out how far the commercial salmon travels to get to our grocery stores here in Portland. First, the salmon travels on a boat from Alaska to Seattle, about 1,400 miles. Then it hops on a truck and is shipped from Seattle to the grocery stores here in Portland. That takes about 175 miles. Once the salmon arrives at the store, it is ready for you to take home. Do you know how many miles it is to get from your house to the grocery store? Ask your caretaker to find out. Add that number to the journey so far and you will get exactly how many miles the salmon travels to your dinner table. 
Let's do the math together. Our salmon traveled 1,400 miles on a boat, right? And then it traveled 175 miles to get from Seattle to our Portland grocery stores. When you add that together, you get 1,575 miles. Now, if I add how long it takes me to get to my grocery store, which is another five miles, mine is pretty close. We are gonna get 1,580 miles for me to get a salmon from where it lives to my dinner table. Now that the salmon's journey is complete, let's take a look at those questions from the beginning and learn their answers. Take a look at this board to help you if you got lost. The answer for question one could have been a couple things. Salmon live in the oceans and in rivers, along anywhere in the Pacific Northwest, all the way up to Alaska. The answer for question two is small fish. The answer for question three, well, there is no one right answer. There are as many ways to catch fish as you can imagine. The ones we talked about here were net fishing and platform fishing. The answer for question four was 1,575 miles. And then you can add the amount of miles it takes you to get from your house to the grocery store and everybody will get a different answer. And finally, for question five, there are 13 steps that the salmon takes to get from its home up in Alaska to us here in Portland. There are so many types of salmon, and what we just learned about are only two types of the journeys that they could have. But no matter the journey, they are an important source of food and tradition here in the Pacific Northwest.